start at like it's about three o'clock, so I'll call a meeting to order. Let me roll call him. Yes, Allison Gould here. Tom Duster here. Scott Holwig here. Roger Lang here. Ken Houston here. Wes Lowry is not here. Kevin Bowden here. Jason Elkins here. Hope Bartlett here. Heather McIntyre is here. Councilmember Martin is not here yet. We do that for him. All right, great. We'll get started. Uh, approval of previous month's meeting. Any questions or comments on the previous month's meeting? Not, sir. Motion to approve. I would so move. Second. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. I, I, I didn't vote, Roger, because I wasn't here, so I can't say that I accurately reflected the meeting. You don't say anything, everything stops here. Right. <laughs> no, you got three people. You guys can get done. You had a motion? All sorry, right, all perfect. right. Kevin, I guess you're doing the uh, water status report. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, flow on the St. Rain this morning was uh, 14 CFS, and with a historic average uh, this time of year, 40 CFS. Uh, the call on the St. Rain Creek uh, is the Zweck and Turner, which is an 1864 water rate. Wow, man. The call on the main stem of the South Platte River is, was North Sterling, and with a priority date of January 5th of 1922. Um, Route Bright's is, or Bud Rock is, a, is full with an elevation of 6,400.1. And uh, Union Reservoir is currently at 26.7 feet or 11,793 acre feet, which is down approximately 8,000 acre feet. Um, and St. Green Creek Basin Storage is at 76%. Too bad in terms of basins. Yeah. Any comments? Yeah. Is there anybody who has a water right earlier in 64? 1864? Yes. Is there several? Yeah, there are a few of them. Not many. <laughs> a lot. But there's a few. Oh. But they only have two more weeks to run direct flow water, anyhow. So. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Sports season. season. Yeah. Um, does it usually run that deep? Uh, no, it's a pretty small flow. Yeah, 14 CFS is like yeah. in the water. Yeah, it's there. Um, you don't see it hit the black and turn often. Yeah. Um, usually it's tops around the long next block. Um, I'm almost there. Hi, Marcia. Hi. It's, it's rare to be that sweet meat. Hi, Eric. At this time of the year. Usually people kind of ditch and start dropping off and start coming back in by October. Okay, thanks, Kim. I assume there's no public mind to be heard. Any revisions to the agenda or submission of documents? All right. Development activity, uh, as I look through that, there is none required. So, uh, any comments, Ken, about that? Or? Oh, no, we have we had some development activity this month. Okay. All right. Now, the general business uh, legislative guiding water principles. Staff will ask water board firms regarding existing principles. And can I assume you're going to lead us on this? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, it's every year, a little, little nervous legislative sessions, to be honest, pretty quick. Um, so every October, um, we bring the guiding water principles um, or legislative principles uh, to water board. Um, essentially, we Send once water boards approve these, we send these up as a recommendation to council. It basically is our kind of our guide to review what review legislative uh, bills that might impact water and uh, utilizing these legislative principles. So, um, I think last year we added uh, the very last principle. Um, 
improving the municipal water pipeline in the states, screening multiple independent sources of rural water, um, encouraging state support for mining and uh, municipal waters. Um, but other than that, they're pretty um, pretty similar to what we've approved in the past. So staff doesn't have any requested revisions or. The water board gives in any input if you have any. If not, we'll forward these on up. And they go up to council and then council approves them usually about the same. Roger, I had um, a thought on the first bullet point. Um, and it's an easy one support water policies that protect our water resources. Now, I don't think I saw in here anything that was related to fire policy. And it's not interrelated in so much of our. Um, grant dollars are going to work with forest policy to make sure that water quality is not impaired by forest degradation and fires and all that. So I thought instead of saying support water policy, say support policies that protect Colorado water resources. Because you know, fire policy isn't water, but it is absolutely important. And there's a lot of federal dollars and state dollars being directed to work on fire sheds to keep the water coming through. So just an observation, um, I think there's going to be a lot of fire activity, a lot of fire policy activity uh, in the legislature this year, including, I believe, um, a burn policy um, that's got some momentum, um, which has an effect on water as well. So that, that's my, my two cents. It maybe is isn't critical, but it seems to be. The last item that Kim pointed out, does that touch anything that you're interested in? It's got <clears throat> And it may not hit the point you're driving at, but now maybe it does. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with the change, but I just want to. I, I don't have an opinion, Roger. Frankly, I mean, I just that, that jumped out at me because, of course, we would support any policy that protects Colorado water resources. It doesn't necessarily have to be modified by water policies. There's mm -hmm. policies outside of that that are helpful. Now, that was my take on that, but you're, you're correct. It probably could be subsumed in that last bullet point as well. I think even if it is, it doesn't necessarily matter that the first bullet point also could could be revised even if, even if the last bullet point does include. So, Scott, your suggestion is that we, uh, we read that change the reading on that yeah the first bullet point correct to remove the first reference to the word water in that bullet point and i don't feel supremely strongly about it it just jumped out at me because most of my water life right now is spent with fire policy <laughs> and, and and trying to, to direct grant dollars to fire funding which is all about water so well, it's a little, you know, little broader direction so i you know, Comments, uh, Allison, go ahead. I would support that change. Um, in addition, I think the fourth bullet point, I would suggest that we, or, sorry, uh, here we remember these. <laughs> fifth bullet point, um, I would suggest we consider adding environmental to the list of agricultural recreation and species. Why don't we uh, why don't we take the first one to start with and then we'll just hop down to here. But is mm -hmm. there any motion to? Uh, sure, I can make that a motion. I would move that um, in the first bullet point of the proposed 2023 City of Norma Water Principles, um, we remove the first reference to water and otherwise leave it exactly the same. Is there a second to that? I would second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, well, let's go down to yours, Allison. Why don't you just repeat what you... Um, I would move to add the word environment to the fifth bullet point following the word recreation. Any comments on Allison's suggestion? 
I was second it, but I was trying to figure out if it should be environmental instead of environment. Yeah. So <laughs> I was playing with that in my mind. Apologies, Allison. Maybe the environment. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm in support, of course. Um, how, however, I do note that maybe it's more specific in that, in that seventh bullet point where it talks about protection of aquatic and riparian areas. And I don't know exactly. Oh, I mean, I suppose environmental could be broader and encapsulate more things than just that. I suppose my mind perhaps wanders to that, to that component of the environment when I hear the word environment and think about water resources perhaps. Um, specifically the reason I suggest it with that particular bullet point is because it involves coordination, which I think is sure. the yeah. aspect that it has. Yeah, interesting. Good. Okay. Is there a second to Yeah, I seconded that motion already, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> All in favor? Say aye. Hi. The environmental, is that what we're going with? <laughs> I think the environment. Unless you're at, yeah. right? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to wordsmith this one. Uh, so we support appropriate coordination of using municipal water use with agriculture, recreation, environmental, and open space uses. I think environmental. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Any, uh, any other suggestions for adjustments or revisions? I don't have another suggestion, but I did have a question about the oh man, here we go. Okay. Um <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six bullet point on the second page. The final sentence specifically refers to the transfer of water from northern Colorado to meet the water needs of the Denver metro area is a significant concern for Lama. I just wanted to find out if there was something particular in mind with respect to that sentence. Um, yes, there is not a specific project in mind. Um, it's generally the concept of there's a lot of water going from northern Colorado. I'll call it northern Colorado. <laughs> To the metro area, um, you know, we we first got hit with the Thornton project. Um, then uh, United Water um, actually filed on the St. Grand Creek. They have a filing on the St. Grand Creek, pulled for a pipeline on the St. Grand Creek for Highway 66 crosses, and taking it over to the plant and then exchanging it up. Um, and a lot of a lot of talk over the last five to ten years about water in the lower reaches of the Saint of the South Platte, um, moving water up up to the metro area, even as much as they've talked about a pipeline down down south. Um, a couple of the entities have bought a couple of ditches up around uh, the. Wiggins or uh, uh, downstream degree between Green and Portland. And then on top of that, we have a real concern about the CBT water, which is it's not fully consumable. We have to let it go. Anybody uses it, so that's going down, and that has to stay in the Northern District. So Northern Water is working on a lot of accounting procedures to make sure that doesn't work out. So it's just um, just a general concern for water. Yes. Yeah, sure. I, I just Welcome. And Allison, if, sorry, I was late. That's all right. Um, it, it might help to clarify this is that what these principles are going to drive is what um, the assistant city manager in charge of the legislative oversight brings forward to the council to choose to. Um, endorse or write to the legislature or send people to testify on. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a position one way or the other. It just says this is of interest to Longmont. Mm -hmm. My comment, I, and I was wondering about the same thing, does it carry much weight? I mean, uh, maybe you can help me. How did that Thornton thing ever actually take place? Which I am surprised 
they were able to reach that far north and without a lot of battle. But um, well, they still haven't got the water here. I know. I, I understand that. But <laughs> how did how did it? Is it is it easy for Denver community to hop all over the place and grab water or not? Um, Maybe not real, not real easy. No, Beck Thornton has been working for quite a while on theirs. Um, one of the biggest hurdles is whether or not it involves CBT water and return flows and all that. Um, it, it does happen and can happen. Um, I think what what the original intent behind this line was was a concern that might get a bill someday in the state legislature that makes it easier. Whether that, you know, who knows what it could be. Mm -hmm. but, um, examples are different bills that come, you know, each year it seems like we, not each year, every now and then we have a bill that changes water law slightly. To, you know, used to be not legal to, uh, Ring girls. Now it is. Uh, it used to be not legal to um, store water out of priority in a in a pit. But now, if you call it a fire, fire, fire protection, fire protection pit, quarry, pond, it's now legal to take it out of priority. Hmm. So there's always the concern that. Every one of these bills are really good ideas, you know, on their face, but they chip away a little bit of water law, and uh, you just never know what, what the next bill will be. Yeah. You know, if if it impacts or makes it easier to you know, water, you realize a little bit like the rest of the things that he saw. Yeah. Uh, they got water well, you know. If they're not getting water from Russell, then they're going to come up and get it in there and come back. And, uh, so there, there is a real concern. Yeah, so you want it. Yeah, that's, that's what that's about, is to, to be vigilant about bills and what impact they might have on the water rights. So it's going to be able to pull water out of Northern Colorado. It is a real concern, you know, drying up. Part of the concern is that you drive the agricultural fields up here and you take that water down to Denver and when you develop up here, that water's not there. So you just transfer the water shortage from that area up to here. That's the idea. Does that help your thought process at all? So are you that, looking to change something or just for an explanation? Uh, an explanation was what I was thinking about, but uh, Marsha's comment helped to kind of fully flesh that out. Um, would the, the if, say there's a bill or project or something that implicated that particular sentence, would that individual come back before the water board before they took a position in the legislature? No, what would happen, well, what happens is is that uh, as far as this board is concerned uh, and the staff as well as as uh, um, sandy uses a tool that um, shows her all of the bills that are coming up in sequence and she reads them against guidelines like these and decides whether or not to pester us for comments about it or not. So if if our guidelines appear to rule out, oh yeah, well, we're not interested in fire stuff, for example, then she wouldn't send it to the water board, she wouldn't send it to the water staff. Um, but uh, so, you know, it's a question of, of what you think you're gonna want to comment on. It's been, <coughs> I don't think I've ever, oh yeah, you know, Actually, the invasive species one mm -hmm. got quite a bit of attention, not just from us, but from, you know, like I think Fort Collins that has, you know, a problem with mussels and horse tooth or anticipates a problem with mussels. And, um, and the legislature does pay attention to, to that when, 
uh, when organizations like us or CML or, or you know, somebody weighs in on a particular bill, then uh, you know, it tends to raise the profile and get people thinking about it more. Functionally, how it happens is Sandy kind of looks at every bill, and then if she finds one she, you know, conflicts with something here, she will send out to the staff liaisons that are looking at legislation. Um, during the legislative session, we do come back to Waterboard with bills that we really want to look at or really want to take um, position on, <clears throat> with the exception that um, when, uh, I'll say when we have time, <laughs> you know, um, in January you have time. There's 500, 300 bills introduced and it takes two or three months to get through them, so you have time. Um, later in the session, you might have a week. I mean, and then it's right at the end of the session, everybody kind of jams stuff in and it's like, you know, if the city wants to take any position, sometimes it's hard to get it even to council. Sometimes we'll have to, yeah, here's our position, and then we look at this, this is kind of water board's direction to us to uh, respond to a particular, and then we send that information to council, and they'll take it, or, or not, I mean, they choose not to do it. But, it, so, not every bill get, makes it back to water board. Okay. But, um, and, I'll be real honest, the last couple of years, there haven't, there have been, a, you know, there's always some water bills, but there hasn't been any really big, I mean, in, this started in 2002 during the drought, and there must have been 50 bills that year, and some of them wilder than others. So that's when we really started looking pretty hard with the water legislation. Yeah, but, um, you know, with the uh, Colorado River concerns and mm -hmm. what's being done at the federal level, um, it could happen again, especially if Colorado's extended drought stays ex extended. You know, this has been a sweet summer for us, but not for everybody in the state. And the legislature, it wouldn't surprise me someday they'll take a position on the Colorado River. We're, we've all kind of danced around that. <laughs> How are we really going to administer this? And, you know, I, I would stand up and say it's prior appropriation, but. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Uh, how, hey, you know, who knows how that will go? I just have a quick historical question. So, um, you mentioned that the, the guiding principles kind of started maybe 2002 or something like that. At that time, was the guiding principles like four bullets long, six bullets long, and then it like it just kind of continually as things come up and you start to say, well, I think we need to actually address that in the principles, or did it feel like what was, what's here represents kind of like the initial stance and maybe something we got tweaked along the way, but for the most part, we had this kind of comprehensive collection. You know, we've tweaked it, but I would say probably 90% of what's here. Uh, well, okay. um, we've had that for quite a while. It, just, it seems like something that could drift over time, right? Like every, like a, a new bill comes up and then you're like, well, we don't have anything in the principles about that, so we better write one, right? And then, and then all of a sudden it's like, 20 long when it started out as like six or something, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, we had, they're, they're really, they were based off our guiding water principles that were a water, uh, water master plan. Water board actually was instrumental in developing those guiding water principles in 2002 and 2003. Um, so I, I credit water board a lot for that effort. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I would say pretty similar. They've served us well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Other comments? I, I had one uh, third in the top on the second page of the water, water policy for uh, transferring historical water from the land being annexed to the city. I guess my question is, and I, I just don't know, it talks about should be encouraged to be completed through leases. How often do we get into to leases with water. My assumption would be it is bought or not bought. Um, that is correct. And actually, we don't have any. We don't. We haven't done these. 
We have a really almost an unwritten policy <laughs> that, that in long run we won't go dry on farmland and take the water off. Even if they want us to. I actually probably more than once I've had somebody call up and say, you know, I'm retiring from farming. I want to I want to sell my water. And he said, well, we don't want to dry up. We might buy your land, but we, <laughs> yeah, we might buy all for open, you know, the land and water for open space. But that's appropriate. But it comes as a package. It comes as a package, deal. yeah. Well, um, but we 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 try not to dry up any, and really haven't. I mean, extremely small, weird circumstances, yeah. a little bit here and there, but. For the most part, we don't go out and get any water. So either by lease or ATMs or anything, we just, that's not how we do water here. Good. Uh, anything else, Ken, on this subject? Or? Uh, I haven't. Yes. Thank you for your input. That's very helpful. All right. Let's move on to item nine, nine A, and hope you are right. Um, I don't have much of an update from last month, just going over um, our contracts for next year with Resource Central and Efficiency Works. Um, but everything's going well. And just if you guys have any questions. I would like to just say I'm deeply grateful for what Hope has done so far this year, and she's been great about <laughs> getting our program up to the next level. Lisa? I would like to say this for, from direct experience now, that um, Resource Central runs a, a terrific program. They actually, you know, I had some, I subscribed to one of their, pro, two other programs, three other programs, and they follow up, you know, I asked if you need any help. It's, it's just terrific. They're doing a great job. So we should, we should all know that. Good to hear because, you know, from our end, they're so helpful in us getting our program going forward. I like to hear that from the customer side. Yeah, yeah they're it doing works a good too. Job. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And my neighbors cool. like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, Yeah. Well, nice work. Thank you. Thanks. Everybody appreciate it. Thanks for the yet. Yes. <laughs> Nobody has a complaint against Hope or <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Very good work then. Hope. Yeah, I can come try. Okay, can you uh, talk about Windy Gap? Sure. Um, there's a little bit of data here, so I wanted to do it in the form of a, a PowerPoint for you. Um, so uh, the work on the reservoir is continuing. Uh, this is a shot of of the center line of the dam um, with the concrete plant, uh, which is the connection between the ground and the dam itself, is you can see they're starting to get to the steep part. And I'm glad I'm not part of concrete up there. <laughs> but um, the foundation itself is about 88% complete um, and done, uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of having it completely prepped and ready for, for the plant. The plinth itself is 68% done. Um, there's a couple sections on the upper ends that are done. They, they can't pour all continuous, so, so they'll pour a section and they'll pour a section. But there's about 2,000 feet of it done, and the bulk of it is down here at the bottom of the dam. And that's cr critically important because um, this is where, of course, when you start building the dam, you start at the very bottom, and, and you know you, it's going to be a short section as you go up. It gets bigger and bigger. So this is the critical part. If you look here, it's a little hard to see, but you can see some of the embankment, especially on the downstream side. And we saw a little bit of that when we were out there on our tour. You can see a little bit of it, but some of the embankment on each side is starting up because the good news is today they're going to start hydraulic asphalt placement on the dam, Whoa. which is it's going to be right where that excavator is, and they'll be you know they'll, they'll place hydraulic asphalt, and then there's you know kind of like a sand mix on each side that holds the hydraulic asphalt together, and then you start building. So you can see where they left it out. The, the hydraulic asphalt is going to go in a lot faster than the dam, so they they're trying to get a little ahead of it. <laughs> 
And so um, it'll come up pretty quick. And then they'll have a biggest challenge is keeping the embankment going up on each side of that. Because you, know, you want to, you generally want to work a dam, you know, all, all your zones um, this up about the same level. Yeah, so they'll be, they'll work down here and then, you know, this will start coming up and they'll try to keep the, the rock fill and everything on each side of it going up at about the same. So, yeah, um, in fact, to be honest, I probably wouldn't be here today if we didn't have a lot of work. I think kind of figured out some way to go up and dig a peak of, of that, uh, the start of it, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the outlet tunnel, I don't have a good picture of it. Um, it's about 2,000 feet long on the outlet tunnel. Uh, it's 24% complete through the end of August. Uh, 575 feet of it is done. So um, there, they should be into about the valve chamber, uh, which is about the center line of the dam um, in a few weeks. So that's going well. Um, then they'll start on the uphill side and start digging until they get back into the valve chamber. Center. So the outlet tunnel's going. Um, one of the things I wanted to, probably the, yeah, interesting, at least to me, um, this is the dam itself. Um, this is an earlier picture, but uh, it's right here. But if you look right up here, this is the pen stock that comes from Flatiron Re or Pinewood Reservoir down to Flatiron Reservoir and the power plant. Um, right here is what's called, this is Pole Hill. So this is called the Pole Hill uh, Tunnel. There's a tunnel that goes through the mountain there and comes out at the bottom of Pinewood Reservoir. Um, and actually, at the bottom, under underwater. Um, that, this is where we'll, the project will tie into um, water supply, and there'll be a pipe down here to the reservoir. So it'll be filled by a pipe down to here, and then the outlet tunnel is down here, which will connect to the power plant at Flatirons. So that, um, that outlet, it's called the Pole of the Old um, Tunnel. That is um, underway and started. So you can see the reservoir on the back side down here in the valley. Um, this is the gate chamber where you'll control the flow of water It'll either come out, here's the start of the Pole Hill Tunnel, just immediately below that, where the water will either go on down the penstock to the power plant, or come this way into the skate chamber, and then there's a pipeline that they've already started putting the pipe in down to the reservoir. But that's the most critical part, because you had to shut the whole CBT system down to do this work. And so they real critical to get it done. Um, that's the actual Y that will be put that, to be put into it. As you can kind of get it to scale when you look at the X, the, the truck. <laughs> um, that's just one one fitting that big. Um, it was so big that the truck couldn't get it up there. They had to use a dozer and the next one to push the truck. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's one big piece of steel. Um, but the good news is it's it's in. It <laughs> that was that quick. That's that's, that's good. But, you know, they just cut that pipe that we saw and, and put it in, and they'll um, they'll pour concrete all the way around it to completely encase it. And then you can see it doesn't. That's why I had to show it on the truck because it here it doesn't look as big. Although if you look at the you guys that are standing there, <laughs> it's big. But um, that was a real critical part of getting this. And then they'll, they'll just tie it in from here. You saw that um, other picture. Oops. Uh, they'll just tie it in that far is all they need to do. And then there's the valve is already in that valve chamber. So you'll then be able to turn the CBT system back on and not have water going on down, which you don't want for a couple of years. <laughs> so you go back one image, two, two images, uh, yeah. So the, 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 the water from the penstock, so the reservoir gets filled from the west side? Yeah, so this is the west side of the reservoir. Yeah. Here's the top end of the reservoir. Yeah. Here's the where the, the bridge over the yeah. penstock will go, and there's a, a road now there all the way over to here. Um, 
and then the pit, the pipeline will come down here and come down to the to the reservoir over here. Interesting. And, and, uh, from the, and so will there be how deep into the reservoir does the pipeline go such that like that I do not know yeah. to be real honest I guess I thought when we were out there and I probably overheard a conversation that was already halfway done and I didn't catch like the, the whole gist of it I guess I thought that it was that they that further downstream on the penstock that they were able to that essentially they were backfilling the water up through what was going to be the outlet but no um or is there some aspect of something there's true? one aspect where they'll they'll tie in the outlet to the carter lake pipeline yeah. and the pipeline going to carter lake right. so if um chimney hall is completely full you'll be able to gravity feed carter if it's lower okay and, but, there, but that's not about filling the reservoir. That was so. Yeah. Like I said, I I listened to you. But I can't remember. It, it, done, so. I'll have to I'll have to double check. I can't remember if that pipe goes to the outlet and then in that way. Huh? It might be. Okay. I'll, I'll check on that. But it, physically, the water will come out there and hold it. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, you know back on that one you just had shows two. Oh, that's back up a little. This, now this. Oh, I thought this was a separate pipe. This is just surrounding this pipe. Yes. Right. All right, almost looked like another. Yeah, this another is another opening. This is actually a bulkhead going into the okay. tunnel. All right. So this is the first pipe out of the tunnel. All right, all right. Which they just basically cut this much of the pipe out, which is what we saw. So from a construction standpoint, um, good news. One thing I did need to kind of give the board a heads up, we just did find this out at our last uh, media participants meeting, is um, the estimates on construction costs so far. So uh, um, now this is the construction budget. There's some money designed, so on top of this. So the original contract amount was 485 uh, million. Uh, there's already been a change order issue for 26 million, and that was for construction delay. So because of the federal lawsuit, um, weren't able to get going, and you know, you know, had to pay the contractor, if you want to think of it as interest or you know cost of cost of construction. Why not 26? So current, so that's a change order that was approved and executed at the start of the construction. So the revised contract uh, to date is 511 million. Um, 106 million earned to date, so 20% of the project already done, uh, build. Uh, so that's, that, I think all that part is really good. Um, what, what uh, and this is a summary of where we are currently, um, so the, so the litigation delays um, essentially ended up with 22 million. Um, there were some uh, in design, there were additional, additional drilling, and, you know, there was a few things that happened um, during the design, which is not uncommon at all. Uh, the owner requested change orders, value engineering credit, um, scope, and existing conditions. Existing conditions is primarily the, uh, uh, when the foundation, they found the foundation much more variable um, when they were clean, opening it up. So that did litigate or end up with some. So, uh, so less the litigation delays is about 3.9 million to date in, uh, uh, actual uh, on the field change orders for, for you know, the foundation, all those kind of things. So that's where the 26 million that we just looked at um, came from. Uh, then, um, because that is a very big number, um, Northern Water, uh, we got a 
see where we are budget-wise for the entire project. Um, so given the, the change orders we had, so um, they, they're, they're looking at um, some foundation changes uh, and that's, they, they're estimated about $10 million for all foundation issues and all um, some plinth quantities and, and basically everything to get the dam building up. Uh, and then the second thing they found um, in the testing is that the rock fill embankment is, is a much higher density than it was estimated. So that's going to be the other large um, chain order, about $10 million. Um, and then they did a comprehensive review of everything else on the project, and they feel it could be somewhere around $5 million. So that's another $25 million. So um, I guess the caution I have is that it was in the original project scoping and the original um, cost estimate, um, there was a contingency of $50 million. It means right now we're projected to be about there. Um, so as long as there's no new <laughs> surprises, and of course once you have the foundation essentially done, uh, that's where most of any surprises come in, in the construction of the dam. Um, although, I don't know, concrete, Cement for concrete is going to get more expensive here, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that. But um, uh, didn't they say um, that the engineering company did a bunch of future buys to control the cost? Um, the uh, yeah, Barnard Construction did a futures buy on all their fuel. So their fuel is set for the life of the project, presumably wherever they're going to get it, then they're going to business. Because <laughs> yeah. they probably got a really good deal when they, yeah. you know. But they didn't do that for the Samara. Uh, I don't know that. Okay. I, I don't know that they did. Because the cement is a smaller part of this project since it's a rock fill. Mm -hmm. There's a significant amount of cement in the outlet tower. Um, 5,000 yards, you know. So they're, Cement is going to a little. That's the only little other thing that really concerns me right now. But I guess the short story is it looks like we're fine. You know, we're still within budget, and most of these costs are all future costs. So they're not. You know, we we have plenty of cushion, plenty of space right now um, in the contingency. But it is projected we'll come close to utilizing that contingency by the time the project's done. And as long as there's no other big major um, surprises along the way, um, we should still be okay. But uh, just wanted to be, you know, upfront with all the participants and everybody that um, that's kind of where the, where the uh, status is right now. So I'm trying to start with the boss, <laughs> you know, the scary part at the end. But um, I, I think we're still on on track. Um, the project's going well. Um, you know, the water guy, we prefer it snow, but, um, you know, <laughs> the weather's been great for the project yeah. this fall. It really, really, really okay. helped. If, in fact, you do get into some financial issues unforeseen now, down the road, how, how, do, you, how do you go about addressing those issues? I mean, all the members are yeah. impacted. You yeah, know how big a share they've got in it. And exactly. Each member, would, they would come back and we would look at that cost. Um, and each member, would, each participant would pay for their proportionate share. And as far as change, you talk, would that be equivalent to rate increases? Is that what you're talking about? I would. That's where I would go. Um, I wouldn't. Um, I can't, you know, that'll be a council decision in the future. Um, right now, most of our capacity, um, we had originally been in the project at a little higher rate, uh, higher level, but we, we scaled back. Part of our participation was for, I'll call it new development, future growth. 
part of it was for the existing system. We kind of scaled back on the existing system. Um, there, it's entirely possible that we take the bulk of that and you can cost the increase out of our cash in there. Mm. I, 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 I would be surprised to see a lot of the money come from rates. Okay. But, uh, that's good news. Again, that's, yeah. That would be a future council decision. Yeah. All right. Nice to have raised the cash in lieu. Then. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, it's nice that we did that. Oh, yeah, I see. Yes, yeah. you're right. <laughs> it gives us even it's more efficient right now. And, and we're, 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 we're doing well on our current cash in okay. money in our cash in our water acquisition. We have other expenses. We use it for land acquisition around the union if some come up to negotiate with somebody else. Um, we have, uh, you know, other, we might have other, but we don't have plans right now to use it all up. <laughs> so there certainly would be some money there. Okay. So that's what I would, you would expect. All right, well, basically good news, actually. I think so, yeah. No, I think it's all going well. I think. Uh, to have the project moving forward. Yeah. Uh, Any other questions for Kim? Uh, I have two questions. Um, first is the corollary to Roger's question, which is what if we don't use all that up? Is it only like the change order is once you commit to the change order, you have to, that's, that's it, the money's out the door, or is it like you actually have to spend it and then you get it back, or like how does that work? If, if per chance we don't have that many change orders, um, then it would, right now it's in a, it's in a fund up at Northern Water. We had to pay all of our money. It's in a fund up at Northern Water. And once a month they pull money out of everybody's fund. One, one huge fund is the, the bond. Some of the participants went together and got pooled bond. Mm -hmm. But it's still just accounts and they, they pull money out as they need it. At the end of the project, um, then all the participants will just, if there's anything left over in each account, technically that would come back to each entity. So Longmont has an account there with our money sitting there. Um, we sent 55 million up, there's 40 million sitting up there. <coughs> uh, one, if there's any left over, we would get that back. If it's just a small amount, you know, if, a few million, and the participant will most likely want to put it in a reserve account for operation and maintenance of the system. Um, that's not uncommon at all. But um, if it's very much money at all, I mean, you know, it would come back. What, what's not? Nice? Because they won't draft. Then you won't end up. And there's a lot of interest. Well, sort of a lot of interest. <laughs> at the start, it's like 1%. You know, there, there'll be interest on that big of pot money, right? and so that's building up too. And so it's basically in an account in our name, and that's our money at, at the end to do. either roll into a uh, operation maintenance account or re return to the entities uh, so in the future. But yeah, their projection is we're going to be pretty close. And second question is the litigation delays was twenty two million. Did that include the forty gap settlement money? Um, the no. Fifteen million, no. The fifteen million is separate, and that's coming out of um, future assessments for the project. Is that just a contract with the contractor? Is it just keep them on the hook? And push um, back? That, yes, that was the, so the contractor, when they, to get a contractor on board and to get, and it was lucky we did because it set some prices like fuel and, and valves and a number of things. Um, it, Four hundred eleven million dollar contract went out. The contractor had the contract, and then as the months went on, as interest and the cost of the pro doing the project went up, then the contractor was able to document 
what the increased costs were. And, and it sounds like a lot, but it was a two and a half year delay on a $400 million project. So you're talking you know, two or 3% a year. So it's just inflation. It's basically inflation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. For the contract. Luckily, we bought the big valves and they were manufactured. Otherwise, it would still be waiting on them. <laughs> uh, and uh, the fuel. And so that bought the contract that bought the futures on the fuel ones. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Yeah. But it's essentially it was two and a half years of inflation. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks, Ken. Cool. Thank you. Jason? Yeah, I got a quick update on two projects. Um, so the South St. Crane Pipeline Pump Station, that's the one we've been talking about where we're going to be diverting water out of the South St. Crane Creek through our pipeline into a wet well, pump it into the north line. Uh, we actually made our first water delivery last week. So yeah, we were doing startup for the pump, but in order to do that, we had to deliver water to the plant. So we delivered about a million gallons of water over three days. So it's our first delivery in was it 18 years, something like that. Um, I don't know if I'm doing math right, 2005 or six, something like that. So um, been a while. So yeah, it's actually made, uh, made deliveries. And so um, interestingly, when we're, when we're pumping into the North Line, so the North Line is being fed from the North Pond. So it has water in it and about halfway down North North Pipeline, where then is where the pump station's at. So we actually end up doing about a 50-50 split once the water reaches uh, Nelson Flanders. So about half the water in the North Pipe when we're pumping is coming from the South Pipeline and the other half is coming from the North. So it's, it's kind of working as designed. Um, running through some startup issues here and there, but we're hoping, you know, as any project, we try to get through those and everything. But so far, everything is going really good, and uh, no major, uh, no major hiccups and stuff like that. So, um, and then the um, the other project I want to give you an update on was uh, the Button Rock outlet repairs. We've had the outlet now shut down for about um, better part of a month, um, and so a couple of years ago, we um, we re rehabilitated the, the the regulating gate and the hydraulics. So we ripped the gate out send it down to Denver, had them touch it up and make all the repairs, welds and coatings and stuff. Well, the one thing we didn't get to do during that was replace the bronze seat that the gate shuts down on and seals against. And so um, uh, we're finally at a point where we were able to actually rip out that old bronze seat and put in a new one and uh, do some field machining and everything and get it within, you know, when you're, you're trying to weld and machine something out in the middle of the field, or I call it, uh, up in the middle of the mountains and you're splitting literally splitting hairs trying to get it down to like you know within a couple thousandths of an inch flatness and everything so it took a little bit longer than necessary having said that we did a, a pressure test we filled the pipe up shut, shut the gate filled the pipe up and it's very very well within tolerance and stuff so we're looking really good so right now we're literally waiting for the paint to dry so, um, uh, we, we put we put a special balzona coating on it um you know it's um friction reducer and you know keep everything from cavitating um, from and from erosion so it takes five days and we'll be able to fill the pipe up and start making releases okay. it's pretty it. amazing to be up there and not see it coming out of the yeah. pipe it's <laughs> almost surreal it is i'm like well, what's different why is it not why is it so quiet up here you know? <laughs> so the guys up there who are doing the work have gotten really Answering the public's questions, they're yeah. like, "Yeah, we get about anywhere from twenty to thirty people a day <laughs> saying the same thing. Like, Never seen it without water. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, at first, Once I had the back. I just waved to him. I didn't say it. <laughs> it wasn't shocking, but it was shocking, really. Well, and then, uh, and then I get I get a few emails and stuff just saying, "Hey." Water's off. What's going on? No, there's nothing happening. But what they yeah. don't see is the guys are in the inlet working, and if you don't. You don't hear a grinder or something going off. You don't know that they're in there. And you just right. it just looks like nothing's working. So I get a couple of emails from right there. You explain it to them, and everybody's all thumbs up. How long has that been down? Uh, it's been down. Um, we started uh, early September and um, six weeks. Yeah. And, and so um, yeah, um, getting that uh, getting that seat perfectly level. We 
we, we we got it in there. We didn't like the measurements. Ended up grinding out some of the welds, reinstalling stuff. I mean, it's um, a, a couple snags, but it's everything's going good. You know, especially considering everything's going over the spillway anyway. And uh, we took some extra measures to make sure we not killing the fish and everything like that. So it's it's, it's actually going really well. So that completes the renovations. Uh, the work that you wanted to get done. Yes. Yep. And then um, at the same time, the state has asked us to come up there and calibrate our flow meter that we got on there. So we're actually going to add um, we're going to add another channel. So we're going to put another um, um, mag meter on there. So we've got basically instead of um, two sensors, we'll double it and have four. So that I'm, I'm not uh, an instrumentation guy. But my understanding, they'll get a more accurate reading and the state wants to start using that as their primary source um, for button rock releases versus the lower gauging station. So. Great. So what is, what's next? I, I'm, congratulations are in order, of course, right? I, I always want to cap, caveat anything about And then what's next for button rock? Anything else that has to be done up there anytime soon? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things that need to happen up there um but as for the dam from a dam safety perspective no i mean we're gonna you know keep doing our annual inspections and, and, and reports and stuff like that and every five years we have to do the um, um you know the outlet inspection so what what we've done now where we drain the pipe and go in there and inspect it we got to do the and we'll, we'll keep an eye on that upper gating or the uh, uh the upper uh, emergency gate the one that's currently closed and holding back all the water. We'll keep an eye on that one. That one's probably due to be rehabilitated, but when we do that, we're gonna have to basically drain the lake. So it's, yeah, Ken and I were just talking about this. It's like, you know, do we do we just say, all right, in five years, we're gonna do it, whether if it needs it or not, or do we want to maybe do more frequent inspections of that gate and try to extend the life out of it, you know? So we, it's something we got to think about because it's going to be it's going to be a lot more costly to do that one. Hope to do nothing up there until John yeah. Hall's done. Yeah, I got eight thousand acre feet. Yeah. It's full. Okay. So, so I mean, you do diver inspections on those? And we thought about doing that. You know, maybe uh, maybe closing you know closing off the gates and everything. Stop making releases and put a submersible down there. You know, a little. I mean, now with submersible technology, we, uh, you know, remote technology. No need to put a person, person down, down in there. Sure. We'll probably get a, a 4K, you know, um, camera, a small little submarine. Uh, I'd be, I'd be so nervous to put a divers down there. I was just curious. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just thinking of the way in which these do kind of walk hand in hand. I mean, you know, that's yes. Uh, um, so it's it's interesting the way that the system in total kind of operates. You know, and not not just individual things. Especially that redundancy of two independent water sources. Mm -hmm. We have 7,500 EVs, so we can get it's just much more powerful for half of you making it. Mm -hmm. Right now, the only time we get any more on makes us nervous as that because, you know, primary source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, that is our primary source. So. I mean, we, we have it in the budget. We've identified that emergency gate repairs is in the budget. And so, that happens next year, we'll we'll do it. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, right now there's really no cause for concern, and you know, we inspected it two years ago. Inspected it during this one, and it's fine. Good. There's no legacy issues from the floods or anything that's still just kind of hanging out there, spillway or something. Like that. Well, I think we're pretty good with. You know, in fact, the pump station was the last flood re repair project. Okay. That we did. Interesting. So, as of a week ago, Jason turning that on. That, that that's kind of like we officially got the flood done. <laughs> At least from raw water standpoint. Storm drainage guys are still working hard. They got all this. Yeah, public F U D uh, about the bond issue from storm water. Exactly. Anybody wants to write a letter to the editor, that would be real nice. That's <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jason. No problem.
Thank you. Item 10, items from the board. Review the projects listing. Any schedule for future board meetings? Any any comments? Anybody? Everybody looked at the schedule that's proposed going forward. I would point out that we, after our conversation last month, we added a section on the bottom of that. So I'm just kind of outlining future topics that the board may be interested in. That as as time comes and we have shorter business meetings. We might be able to invite some of these entities to come down and give us presentations. I think that would be um, actually I would enjoy it. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a few of those yeah. things. So we just if there are more top topics, you know, feel free to give us those topics anytime. You know, hey, I want to hear about this or that. And uh, but for now we've got these are the kind of the big five biggest ones you'd be interested in, in hearing. I've got a quick one. I just mentioned it in passing before, but I, I do think that um, given what happened in um, Louisville Superior in December, um, that there is some pre legislative work being done on a burn, um, on a burn bill. And it's an interesting one um, because you know, ditch companies historically I mean, need to clean their ditches to deliver water, which they're statutory obligated to do. Not, Cleaning by burning, but it's always been the you know the preferred method because it's relatively cost efficient and it's been done for more than 50 years, 160 years. Right? But more and more jurisdictions are prohibit are prohibiting burning uh, unless it's under exactly pristine conditions. And some of those don't even count. I mean, you go through Erie, and because that housing developments are so close to ditches, they don't no burning. So the options are pretty limited and pretty expensive. So I'm curious as to how if the city has any. You know, take on that because you guys maintain ditches as ditch company representatives through the city, right? Yeah. And this actually derived, I think, out of four columns. Um, I think that's where this bill idea came from. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's probably going to have some some legs because there are some probably very nervous municipalities, population municipalities, and uh, down, downwind of the foothills and um i just don't know if that's something you guys is on your radar can or not um but that 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 there's a committee coalescing and meeting and i think most of the people are waiting on that and another bill about the elections to see who's in the legislature and who's likely to carry and who's going to be committee chairs and all that but you know interesting time every two years when you have to change everything around in the legislative house anyway yeah no I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because there there is a lot of background talk about that subject, and then there's also the potential legislation. There is a concern over the years, it has become hard to burn ditches. So, God, I think legislature will help there. Um, the, the item number E here, Watershed Center, including the St. Rainforest Health Partnership efforts. Right now, for Boulder County, that's where that whole conversation is happening is through the St. Rainforest Partnership efforts. Yeah. And it does involve, originally that was the forested areas up in the foothills. And just this year, um, we had a, we're saying, well, what are, we, you know, what, what are we gonna do up down on the plains? Because that's a, an area we need to be concerned about. And, and one of the ideas coming out of that is um, doing, more concerted efforts on, on burning ditches. It, it would, um, there, there was a concern that the ditches, it's easy for the ditches to bring the fire into the communities. Um, a little bit of debate whether or not that happened in Louisville and Superior. The ditches did burn. Um, I, I think everybody says, hey, it's 75 mile an hour wind and fire. <laughs> nothing, you know, that's gonna help. But for normal situations, they do think that's helping. So yeah, that's um, that will be part of that um, St. Rainforest Health Partnership. That's where hopefully they're, they're talking about doing that. And yeah, the ditches have almost stopped burning. You know, it's, it's hard for a ditch to burn. Yeah, I think that's geographic a little bit. I think there's some locations where jurisdictionally it's just hard to get a burn permit or burn clearance, right? And others is still not that difficult. I mean, even in Boulder County, the, you know, a lot of these ditches call the sheriff's office and say we're burning. The sheriff's like, okay. You know, there's not a prescribed plan in place. There's no standing operating procedure. There's, you know, 
Um, so it's been a little bit, um, uh, there hasn't been consistency in how that's applied. And then there's some ditches that go through four or five different jurisdictions. You can start in Boulder County, you can go into Weld County, you can have three, mis three different municipalities along the way. And each one has a different you know, set of circumstances and regulations. So I just raise it because I know Longmont is on lots of ditch boards. A lot of ditches go through town, and some ditches that you guys are on aren't even in town, but they're near town. I was going to say, how do you clean out a ditch that just runs through town? It's obviously not going to burn. <laughs> you can do a lot of mechanically, but there's some places you can't get in with that kind of equipment either. I mean, there's development on either side of the ditch, so there's maybe 10 feet in width. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just depends. You're not a skidster going through. And now, I would do say our, our open space division has. Last year they did one burn and they burned part of Spring Ditch number two. And like this week or next week, we're planning a second series of burns, uh, the upper end of Spring Ditch number two from. 17th Avenue up to Highway 66, and, and so, and, and that's burns interior to the community. So that's that's a big effort, but um, it will make it much safer. We have had, you know, those are real cattail dominated areas, and cattails burn like a, I mean, they send them to a black smoke and you see them last yeah. time. There. And so, so that efforts they're doing will help there. So yeah, it's 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 one of the toughest questions, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't think there's an answer. I'm just raising it because it's going to come up, and it hasn't come up legislatively in a long time, uh, at least not on a state basis. Well, is the permission granted verbally most of the time? It or depends it? on who you talk to. <laughs> there are two ditches that I know of in Boulder County that. Get, that have to go through different procedures in the same in the same jurisdiction to burn. And it's just mm -hmm. based on who knows who. Honestly, I mean, one guy's been doing it with the sheriff's office for probably 30 years. He just calls him up and says, here's what we're doing. And the sheriff says, okay. And other ones have to go in and talk to him about how they're going to do it and the equipment they're going to use and the people that are going to employ. And I, I'm not making any observation. I'm just... Well, it's not going to get easier, things. I'll guarantee you. Well, it shouldn't. I mean, it shouldn't make an easy thing, right? Yeah. Stuff. Most ditch companies don't have the luxury of having excavators at their beck and call either. Mm -hmm. And the capital and the operating budgets for most ditch companies probably preclude them from going out and getting an excavator approved mm -hmm. and putting out a section of ditch, particularly if it's a 25 mile ditch. Right. And the cost is not really the determinant. It is the getting rid of the wood, getting rid of the material. It's just, there's no place to take it. You have to really go with it. Um, yeah, that's the hardest. Well, and historically, ditch companies have been able to leave spoils on the bank. That's part of what their historic practices is <coughs> protected. But I mean, a lot of property owners don't have to see a lot of woody debris <laughs> sit there on the bank as part of a fire source, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. fuel source. Right. That's a fire hazard. Or you comes up quite a bit. <laughs> Fort Collins approach was from a police power perspective what their what the extent of their police power was to be able to dictate how to do things. So it's pretty interesting because there's some constitutional protections for each company operations too. So I don't know where that ends up and I don't even I, I'm just like I said, I'm observing and it's it's a tricky issue. It's a tricky issue. Any uh, any other comments on more projects we're looking at? I was just going to say thank, thank you for uh, translating the kind of ambiguous discussion that we had last time into some real action items. I, I, I think we all appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, on, yeah, this is a really interesting list and I can't wait to hear these presentations. On the lower Colorado River issues and concerns, I was wondering, is that like lower basin? Yeah, that's the uh, callback. Okay. It's call it issue, and um, one of the one of the staff members up at Northern Water had a really good presentation on that. But I thought I'd like to invite yeah. the person down here to give that presentation. Kyle, probably. Kyle Whitaker, yeah, he, he, he's a good presentation. He's very very knowledgeable. Just actually gave the presentation to the South Platte Roundtable meeting 
last Tuesday, so <laughs> you got to see it there. But um, it's a really good presentation. Fit that in somewhere. So but that's you, a big issue. Are you going to try and lock in dates for those topics, Ken? Um, well, we will somewhat because if you don't get a lot of the speakers way ahead of time, <laughs> and they say, no, I'm busy that day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, but we'll kind of look at our, we have kind of months that are historically a little less. Uh, January is usually pretty full, March is always full. April is full because of March, 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 March. May is usually a little more full. So, you know, okay. we'll, we'll pick some days. Today would have been a good day. <laughs> it's not quite as busy. Any other comments on? I, I was just going to ask about the next water board meeting. Uh, well, actually, two, two events there in November. So the, the first one is a standard of future events schedule. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's Northern Colorado Water Conservation District. Um, yes. Um, is that so? Um, is that that that's something that obviously belongs on to the to the part of? Um, and so that's a, a kind of an annual meeting, or is that a a um, quarterly or? That's a biannual meeting. They have a fall water user meeting and a spring water user meeting. Okay. Um, they're, I think, really excellent because you get enough. The presentations are informative, but getting in the breaks yeah. <laughs> and actually talking, I, I get a chance to talk to the water resource manager from Fort Collins and Loveland and yeah. Delaware and Greeley. So, so where is that taking um, It'll historically it's taking place up at the ranch at Lerner mm -hmm. County Fairgrounds at I-25 and just north of Highway 34. Um, embassy Suites, I think. Yeah. I don't know if that's where they're having it. Yeah, I think it's different, Ken, but I can't remember. I think they were changing the ship for some reason. Okay. Right. And, uh, um, it, if you have a, I don't know, information about that or something, it's important. You'll get an email. Okay. Yeah, you'll get an email pretty quick. In fact, if you haven't got one, I'll send you one. Okay. And then, because uh, you can register that. Yeah. The water board meeting for next month is during the week of Thanksgiving. I just was going to bring that up, just put it on everybody's radar screen. Just is meaningful to you or not? So. Sorry, it's still at the embassy suites. I thought for some reason I'd heard otherwise, but I'm nine till three on that Tuesday. Okay. At the embassy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's actually not the Fairbanks Road to say Yeah, got it. Must be at the South by Forum that is changing the location. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. Get there. Okay. Yeah, it would be good. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, unless somebody tells us otherwise, if everybody's gone for the Thanksgiving week, we might not have one. But, um, but the next item, I did want to talk about that. So, <laughs> uh, okay. on the water board applications. So we do have one. Oh, we have now two. So we have two applications. So for, for which is good <laughs> yeah. uh, for water board uh, to fill Todd's position. Um, as you remember, we didn't get one last spring, so um, the board had asked us to had decided you wanted to interview as the board um, at a board meeting. So our plan will be on the twenty first to have invite those two applicants here. Um, we can do it beforehand, or I think it might be nice to just have them listen to the board meeting. And then interview right <laughs> And then you sat through and then, yeah, See if they <laughs> sat around or run out the door. <laughs> I'd rather do it first, Ken. <laughs> what what <laughs> else just the next year go to the meeting and we know. <laughs> Got it. But um, if that, if I were still, if I think I'm still on track with the board on how you want to do it, I'm going to plan on doing that next, next month. And uh, we, 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 we're going to hear we here two applicants on that day. Um, yes. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you'll make a recommendation to council. And then, can you refresh my memory, Marsh? I think when the council gets a recommendation, you still will at least interview the top candidate. We will interview the, the top candidate, the top two candidates, what you know, whatever. Um, but uh, we don't have to interview everybody. So you guys are essentially picking the 
know, we only have one open seat, so you could theoretically send us only one person. And then we would um, we would interview that person, and, and there'd be a low probability that we would reject your choice, but it's a, you know, no, no, it could yeah. happen. Yeah, sure. Uh, if we were in a circumstance where we needed to remote into that meeting, would we be able to accommodate that situation? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think we can bring it up here. And, and Does that violate any interview rules that we're aware of? They have to be recorded anyway, so if you are remote, I don't think it would be a problem. Yeah, some of the other boards are doing them all virtual, yeah, so I don't think it violates any rules. We may even consider the fact that the applicants may also have problems with that. Possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. And I will need to remove myself from the meeting when you guys are interviewing the applicants. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, I haven't thought about that. You know, we haven't talked much about this, but since it's going to be something we're going to have to deal with, as far as questions, um, we'll, are, are Somebody putting together questions for our use. Or? We'll be happy to put a set of questions together. If you have any questions you want, um, why don't you just email them to us and, and we'll include those. Or if you want us just to come up with. There is a set of general questions there, there. already that we can email to you guys. And if you have ones that you would want to add, we can do it that way. Yeah, yeah why don't we do it that way? Send us what you have. Them together, we'll send it to you. You can add questions and that way you'll have them all before yeah. the meeting. All right. And then the audience will be, will you be involved with us, Ken? Or I won't be start? interviewing because the council wants the board to do it, but I'll be happy to be there to assist. And, and I haven't really thought through that question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious. You know, we'll just be the board. But that would be helpful, sending the questions out, then we can. Maybe we yeah. did it for sustainability, it was going to send me. See, I wouldn't want the whole, out of respect to the poor interview, <laughs> it's first being interviewed, having 20 people here, you know. But, um, but we're just talking about the board. Yeah, I will do the questions. And then when we, I, I would assume, are you proposing that to start before our normal meeting time? So staff would come in at a certain time or? Um, we can do it before or right at the end, whichever the board prefers. Each interview can be up to 30 minutes, so it depends on how long your interviews go. Well, I would think if we did it before, we could pin the timing down a little more accurately with the interview people. I mean, board meetings may end at whatever. I, that's just my thought. Give me your comments before or after, any preference. I, I can agree with what you're saying there in terms of how did I pinned down the, the other idea was to have the applicant kind of sit in on a board meeting that that seems to be a little intimidating i'm not sure i'll make people kind of want to depending on what we've yeah. been talking about yeah. So. Yeah. what are your thoughts if we I just start the first. interviews at two o'clock and then we're done with them by three o'clock and then we start the board meeting at a regular time so we're yeah we can set if there's just two of them We'll set it up at 2 and 2.30. Okay. If there if another nice. one applies, we might do it like 20 minutes. Yeah, I'd say 25 minutes, you know, give you 25 minutes, and we got five minutes before the second. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It would be awkward if two people were sitting there the whole time and one of them wasn't going to become a board, too, right? So mm. they didn't have the option to sit there. Mm. Well, the way we, we don't get made a decision anyway, we're only recommending, but. Um, yeah. You know. well, we expect applicants to watch the videos. Read the yeah, we sent those out. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Anyway, I, I think that makes sense. Okay, so All right. Assuming so we only have two. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted there's two applicants. What if we get more? Then you'll need to email us right. and we'll have to think about it. <laughs> Tell them they're don't too late. Overcomplicated. <laughs> when, does, when does the door shut on Africa? The 24th, I think. Right? I think it was last week, actually. Was it? 24? They extended it to the They extended it. Gotcha. So, how. How long do you think we need to have conduct a reasonable interview? 15 minutes. Yeah, I'd say 15, 20 minutes. That's what I was saying, 25, and just being yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. Remember that the council used to give them five. 
So I mean, I when I did it, it last like job, it's like none of them took the four and a half hour. They yeah. were like 15, 20 minutes probably. So I just wonder whether that 2 to 3 p.m. could accommodate more than just two people. I mean, it could, it, I'd say at least it could do for sure. Yeah. And then maybe if it's four, then that will then we need to talk about it. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> let's see how that rolls out. But yeah. I, I agree with you, Tom. If push comes to shove, we get a third one in there. But so, all right, we'll wait to see the information. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's exciting. It's, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else we need to really talk about. I think we pretty much covered it. It's been a pretty smooth. Thank you for being so concise on your presentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do a good job. Good things happen, you know. Yeah. Sorry. So anyway, all right. Thank you, everybody. With that, uh, we have a motion to adjourn. I would move to adjourn. All right. Sure, I'll second that. Right. We're good. How's it going here?